Hey, this is Kyle from Pure, and welcome to part two of using VVols with VMware Cloud Foundation as supplementary storage for your workload domains. Um, if you watched part one, you saw that we got to the point of setting up a VVols data store. Uh, so in this section, we're going to start by importing some protection groups that we've set up on our Pure Storage array before this started. So you can see them, those two there. One is an hour snapshot, and then a second one is a 12-hour snapshot that replicates off asynchronously to a separate array. I um, mean, really, this is just to show that when you import these storage policies or these protection groups, they become available here uh, for you to use. Um, you can edit them and add additional rules or tags to them, um, or you can use them as is. So they're super useful as building blocks, or you can just use them out of the box. Uh, but what we're, what we're going to do here instead is we're going to actually define a couple of categories and a couple of tags and, and show you how you can use it. Um, we'll call this one uh, workload domain one, uh, which is the workload domain we used in the previous video. Um, that This category will apply only to data store and data store clusters. And then we're going to add a VVols tag uh, here. And then in addition to that, let's go ahead and add a VMFS tag. The idea being we're going to use this policy structure to be able to intelligently uh, tell uh, which array to assign or place a data store on top of. Um, so here you can see our VVols data store. We're going to assign this with the VVols tag for workload domain one. We've got an ISO VMFS data store that we're going to assign the VMFS tag. Now we can actually go into VM storage policies, and now we're going to create a new one. Um, we'll call this one workload domain or workload one uh, VVols. This will be a uh, use tag based placement rules, which we just created. So our category is workload domain one, and then we're going to use our VVols tag. Uh, we can see that our VVols data store is the compatible storage, which is expected. And then we go ahead and click finish. So now with this storage policy-based management built, let's go ahead and go to hosted clusters and let's deploy a CentOS VM. So we'll quickly quickly go through this. Uh, we'll just give it CentOS name is the name, CentOS 8. Uh, we'll give it a compute resource. And now here we see our storage policy-based management workload 1-VVols. And the only compatible storage, right, is our VVols data store. Uh, this is great when you have a lot of different arrays connected to your environment. It enables you the ability to easily uh, pick the right one. Um, we'll quickly go through here, as you can see, and customize a few more things. Um, I'm going a little faster here just to save time. But one important thing is that we will add a second uh, hard drive to this VM. Um, now I'll just go ahead and select the proper ISO for CentOS. Um, we'll create the VM, and I'll, I'll actually pause right here just to quickly build this VM, uh, not to bore you with that. Um, so the VM has been built. We're back. Um, now we will go ahead and, so as you can see, it's on our VVol data store. Um, and I think the first thing we'll do is let's create a managed uh, VM snapshot. Um, so we'll just go ahead and create the snapshot. Uh, we'll call it vcf-vvols. And we'll uh, quiesce the memory. So this snapshot will be created relatively quickly. Um, and now we can see that not only do we have, or actually we just have our managed VMware snapshot. And now when we look at this CentOS VM, we're seeing things with VVols, right? We have the ability to import a individual data disk, drive two, and we'll go ahead and create this one. The bottom one is our managed uh, snapshot that we took. The top one was our protection group based snapshot. Um, so you can see we can easily bring in that VM. Uh, one other quick example, just to keep this demo reasonably short, is we'll go ahead and power off this VM and then delete it. Uh, whoops, let's say we didn't mean to do that. Um, but it's gone now. Um, obviously, you know, sometimes things like this happen in the data center. Um, but what's neat is if we switch to our data store view, go to our VVols data store, we have the option to undelete this virtual machine uh, within 24 hours of deleting it. Now we have to pick an individual uh, host to restore this VVols based VM to. And then we simply click ready to complete. 
It'll take it a few minutes to restore, so I'll speed it up here again in the interest of saving time. Uh, but here we see our CentOS 8 VM is back, uh, fully available, and we can power it on and, you know, it's open up the console and uh, we are back up and running very quickly. Um, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do with VVols, but hopefully you enjoyed this demo and uh, thanks and we'll, we'll be back soon with more.